Hello, my people. Now, welcome back again to my channel. I don't come again. I may be the worry again. If today now your first time when you they come here, ah, my brother, my sister, I bet like this video. Make you still help me subscribe. As you subscribe now, so God go see the do one for you. For now, one had already they come here before. Now, they already subscribe. Hey, on a too much. Oh, now God go run on a matter for now. Okay, I don't come again. I tell her before, I say, I go come tell her about the story of Jaja of Okbobo. Because this story, why is they important? It tied to the Ijo history. So today, na, I don't want to take on a time. Make I just knock the story so that we go, they go. I will not be so my people. Make on a hear, oh. make on a see tell on a children, oh. Jaja of Okbobo, I waited to teach people for school that time, oh. these days, and they do history again for school now na go see they tell on our children how the thing be make another take on our time make on a listen you know, as i start the story of jaja of okbobo the slave boy who became king king jaja of okbobo the slave boy who became king he was born in umuduro ha amiagbo imo state in the year 1821 his actual birth name is unknown and also the identity of his true parents the igbo land in the 1800s was in showers as it saw europeans invade the land for slaves in exchange for firearms, tobacco bullets, and black slave raiders, we are invading different regions and selling Igbos to slavery. After he was kidnapped and taken to Bonnie Highland, River State, he was renamed Jubo, Juboga, by his first master, and later resorted to Chief Alani, the head of the Okbobu, Malina group of house. It was here that the British, who could not pronounce his name properly, gave him the name Jaja. From the 15th to the 18th century, Okbobo, like the other city states, gained its wealth from the profits of the slave trade. This thriving business was enough to make one rich as well as give him popularity. However, the abolition of the slave trade in 1807 was supplanted by the trade in palm oil. Palm oil in itself was so vibrant that the region was named the Oil Rivers Area. Astute in business and politics, Jaja became the head of the Anna Pepu House extending its activities and influence by absorbing other houses, increasing operations in the hinterland and augmenting the number of European contacts. Later on, a power struggle would ensue among rival factions in the houses at Boni, led by Purple House High Chief Oko Jumbo leading to the breakaway of the faction led by Jaja. He established a new settlement which he named Okbobo in 1869, where he became King Jaja of Okbobo. This new status saw him declare himself independent of Boni. Okbobo soon dominated the region's lucrative palm oil trade and became home to 14 of what were formerly Bonnie's 18 trade houses. Part of this success is attributed to the fact that Jaja made moves to block the access of British merchants to the interior, giving him an effective monopoly. At times, Opobo even shipped palm oil directly to Liverpool, independent of British middlemen. Apart from the fact that he was a wealthy merchant and a very diplomatic man, he was also a man of honor and power. 
This is exemplified when he aided the Queen of England in a battle in the Gold Coast, the Ashanti War, and was awarded a sword of honor from Queen Victoria in 1871. As time went on, the oil trade business in Opobo land began to expand and the ambitions of the Europeans to dominate this market grew, thus creating a conflict between Jaja and the British top sales and business tycoons, one of whom was John Hoot of Liverpool. While Jaja invaded attempts by Hoot to penetrate Jaja's market in Kwa Ibo River, Liverpool members of the Africa Association were pressing for strong action against Jaja over what they described as falling rates of profits. In the course of national interest, King Jaja dealt severe blows on the Kwa Ibo people in 1881. He raided about seven of their villages captured many and executed the hundred people for engaging in direct trade with the Europeans. Even when the British came up with funny tricks and laws to Atron Jaja in the quest of control of the oil region, like a game of chess, he always checkmated them and this angered the British the more. At the 1884 Berlin Conference, however, the European powers designated Opobo as British territory and the British soon moved to claim it. When Jaja refused to cease taxing British traders, Henry Hamilton Johnston, a British vice consul, invited Jaja to negotiation in 1887. By September of 1887, Johnson brought a warship named HMS Goshawk to Opobo and invited Jaja on board. He assured Jaja that was that nothing was going to happen to him. When he went on board, he was given two bad choices by Johnson. One was if he would not allow the Europeans access, he would go back and face immediate bombardment from the British Navy. And the other was he goes into exile. Jaja, being a man of strong values and principles, chose not to back down. The British arrested him and tried him in Accra in the Gold Coast, now Ghana, then took him to London for some time, where he met Queen Victoria and was a guest in Buckingham Palace. No one knew what transpired between him and the Queen, but after some time, he was finally deported to the West Indies. While in Ezra in the Caribbean, his presence was alleged to be the cause of a massive unrest among the people of Barbados. After years of campaigning for his freedom, Jaja was moved to the island of Sao Cape Vende, off the coast of West Africa to prevent the possibility of a revolt. Jaja eventually won his liberty after years of fighting against his wrongful abduction and it was agreed by the parliament that he would be repatriated to his kingdom state of Opobo. Jaja now well advanced in age, longed to see his beloved Opobo land again. Now, this is the twist. The people of Barbados, mostly of people of Africa, Nigeria descendant had heard rumors that an African king was being captured and is now on his way to the island. They all rallied themselves together to give him a befitting reception. It was quite an interesting episode of his life in Barbados. The British brought him and wanted to try him on the island for his crimes. The people of the island felt insulted about how an African king had been subjected to such ridicule and shame. Just when the ship made bed at the waterside, the people of the highland rushed and camped at the waterside to avoid the British bringing Jaja to the colonial courthouse, which was in the middle of the village square.
They literally camp at the waterside throughout the night. The next day, which was a Sunday, the people of the highland had their church service on the waterside, right by the ship. Jaja was seen looking through as the service goes on. Before the service was over, it came out and there was a loud cry among the women welcoming him, a king from their ancestral motherland. The crowd went hysterically. The British feared that they may plan an escape plan for him, got their bags and sailed back to St. Vincent. He was moved around from one place to the West Indies so that his family lineage can be traced in St. Vincent. It was said even at a time that he got married and had children. Jaja in the West Indies, Barbados and St. Vincent is a common slang for someone who is arrogant and carries himself or herself with an air of pride and dignity. Coined after the way King Jaja himself held his head up high while he was on the highland. In 1891, Jaja was granted permission to return to Opobo but died en route. Allegedly poisoned with a cup of tea in June, his body was shipped instead to Tenerife in the Canary Islands, where he was buried. Following his exile and death, the power of the Opobo state rapidly declined. The land was plagued with slave raids, riots, and the British exploited the land for its natural resources. After many years of clamor and protest, his body was properly assumed and sent back to his beloved Opobo kingdom, where he was laid to rest. His remains are now a sacred grave shrine behind the palace of the Amayanabo of Opobo. This is a story of Opobo, the ego slave trade. I hope you enjoy this story. I beg, if you watch the story finish now, so make you subscribe to my channel. I will come with other interesting ones. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you now again for another video. Bye.